Hey guys, this is Aaron Lewis, and in today's video, we will be doing a grooming of Little Miss Scarlet here, my miniature poodle, who is two years old recently, actually. She turned it on November 11th, I believe, or November 5th. I always get those two days mixed up. But we will be grooming her today. She has already been completely groomed back. This is actually filmed after I groomed her. I wanted to show you the aftershot first so you guys would know what she'd look like after. But there's actually some problems that happened during the filming of this, which is why she is not actually completely groomed yet. So watch to the end to see why she isn't groomed yet. But yes, I do hope you guys stick around throughout the whole video. It is a very good video to watch. Remember, this is only my third time grooming her. So it's sort of the classic poodle cut I've gone for, minus the body not being finished yet, but we've done the paws, the face, I've tried to neaten up the pom-pom a bit, and the ears, and we've also done the tail area. So we just shaved that right back where her poo hole is, poo hole, <laughs> her bum hole is, just so no poo gets caught in the hair around there, and it also provides a cleaner environment for it to stop any bacteria or anything forming there. But yes, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. All right, so the first part to grooming is what I do is I bath them. So I usually use Dermcare Alovene, just because Scarlett does have a very sensitive coat and I have tried other brands, but she gets all rashy and itchy and she ends up bleeding because she ends up biting herself and stuff. So I'm just gonna quickly wash her. I'll probably fast play this whole section and then we'll dry her and then we'll move on to the living area to groom her. Now when you're bathing them, you want to make sure that you use a lot of soap so you get rid of every bit of oil that is on their coat because if you want a successful groom, you do want to make sure that there's no oil residue left in their coat. So I usually start just by giving her a good wash down just with water, making sure she's all nice and wet because if she shakes, then the soap and stuff won't really absorb into her coat properly. So we have completely finished bathing her now. I'm just gonna get a towel, as you can see here, and just sort of gently rub all the water out into the sink. You wanna squeeze her legs, any loose hairs that are there, you just wanna squeeze tight to sort of absorb all the water in there to make it a faster dry. And Scarlett also knows to help me out by shaking a lot. Even though it does make the room a bit wet, it does help out quite a lot. Then I just give it a rough over. Should probably shake some more. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. One more. One more. Come on. Shake. Ah, down. 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 Shake. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. You're looking bad right now. There you go. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. All right, now I'm just gonna place her on the bench here and finish drying her off. Now for this bit, it will be a very noisy bit, so I will definitely be fast playing this whole bit. Or maybe I'll just skip to actually her all dry because it is a very long process drying a poodle, especially when she has a very thick coat and she hasn't been clipped in a while. So I'll just be skipping this whole bit so this is what she looks like before she gets dried off. This is what she looks like completely dry. As you can see, she is quite a mess and very in need of a trim. So that is why I decided to do this video today. Now I will take her into where I will be trimming her and we'll continue it from then. Now we are at the trimming table. Now with this video, I'm just gonna be completely trimming her back. I'm gonna be aiming to do a lamb cut, but pretty much it's gonna be just a classic poodle cut, trimming back her pom-pom, making her look all neat 
doing the poodle paws, the tail, and the face, so trimming it right back to practically the skin. Um, now bear with me, this is, as I said at the beginning of the video, this is my third time trimming Scarlet properly. Myself, I used to take her to a poodle groomer, but that was starting to get quite pricey. I think it was like 120 every two months, so I thought I'd just buy trimmers and do it myself from now on. So, first off, we're just going to start with the feet, and then we're going to do, actually no, I'll start with the face, then we'll do the feet, then the tail, and then we'll trim back her body. Now, my trimmer that I use is just a wall. It is a Max 52 speed. I just bought this from my local chain pet store. I think it was $400, so not the cheapest of ones, but it's definitely the cheapest if you are a groomer, where their ones probably cost over $1,000. So, let's get trimming her. I wish I could be doing a close-up of what I'm doing, but unfortunately I do not have the correct equipment to be able to do that. But practically what I'm doing is I'm just shaving her face right back. She is being quite fidgety. You want to make sure you be very careful to not get any skin, so you want to try and stretch out the skin to be straight so there's no curves or anything in it so the blades don't catch it. Because the last thing that you want is to make your poodle bleed. So I usually just grab the corner of their mouth and I'll hold it right back. So this is what she is looking like now. Her face is all trimmed back. Still gonna neaten up around the eyes a bit there, but you can see I made a triangle here. So from her ears, you go straight down and you meet in the middle of the neck there. Now I'll be doing her feet next, but I'm just gonna quickly go take a break because I'm gonna go get some water and then we'll continue this in a minute. All right, so the feet probably take the longest just because you've got to try and get in around their paws and you don't want to nick their paw pads either. So this bit will probably be fast forwarded just because it is a very long process and I don't want you guys to have to sit through it all.
<laughs> this is one paw. Pretty much done. I'll probably get the scissors later and just neaten it up a bit. As you can see, there's still a few fluff bits there. And I will be trimming her nails later on. Probably not in the video, because I'm not as confident in trimming the nails, because if you get the quick bit of the nails, it can actually cause them to bleed out through their feet. And I never want that to happen. So I usually either get my mum to do it, or the vets to do it, just because I'm not that confident in doing it. But I might give it a shot today. I guess we'll see. But yes, that is at one pour all done. Now I'll come back to when all four pours are done and then we'll be doing the tail bit here. All right, so all four paws are now done. I even got around to trimming her nails. They weren't as bad as what I thought they were. It was actually quite easy. But now we are going to be doing her tail bit here. Now you just got to trim back, back to the skin like we've done with the paws, probably maybe about two inches up her tail, and then just create a little triangle around this bit here. And then I'll be doing her poop lines, I'll be cleaning up her bum area, just so no poop gets caught there. And then we'll be doing her underbelly, so where her private parts are, neatening up around there, because you don't want any loose hair around there, because it can actually cause UTIs. My vet told me that, because Scarlett has already had a couple UTIs, um, but the vet did recommend making sure that every time she gets groomed, making sure you tell the groomers to clip, clip right back, close to the skin line around that area just so no bacteria grows on the fur around it. Now let's get stuck into doing the tail. I'm actually going to be letting the trimmers cool down a bit because they're actually quite hot to touch and we don't want to be burning her underbelly. So I'm just going to start sort of neatening up her pom-pom and thinning out her tail and stuff. Now, this is my first time using thinning shears. So let's see how we go. So we have done her face, her tail, her paws. Now I'm gonna have to trim her right back before I can attempt to do the underbelly, I realize, because she is very long at the moment. I messed up a bit on the face, as you can see, it doesn't look very poodle-like, but it still looks cute nonetheless. I'm still trying to perfect how to do like her pom-pom and ears and everything, but as I keep saying, this is only my third time of grooming her. I have left it quite long this time. As you can see, she looks like she's quite fat at the moment, but it's honestly just fur. So I don't know how long it's going to take me to do all that bit, just because my blades do get quite clogged and they overheat, so I have to keep stopping and waiting for it to cool down. But we do have the air con on at the moment, so hopefully that will ease the temperature of it a bit, but I'm just quickly brushing her right now trying to do straight lines so I can just do the shape right back and forth so let's see how it goes I might have to come up with another idea if she is too thick to trim through so I'm just using the number two blade here just wondering if I should start off with a smaller blade I mean a bigger blade hmm now I'll give this a shot. It's alright. It's alright. It's not really taking off much as I go through. It's going to be probably the longest bit of the whole video. I thought the feet were going to be the longest bit, but I feel like trimming her body right back just because that's probably the biggest amount of hair that's on her body and she doesn't seem to like the blade this time it's not hurting her at all it's just 
I don't think she likes the vibration of it going through her back. Scott, come on. You weren't like this last time we clipped you. We're gonna have to stop this video here because it turns out that her coat is simply way too thick for even these blades. Now remember these blades cost me $400 and even they can't do a poodle coat when it is this thick and dense. It was fine when I was just doing the feet and the face and everything, but trying to do her whole body with that would probably take a whole day, like 24 hours I reckon, because it's not taking much off at all. So I'm just probably gonna have to book her in to get her completely trimmed back. They're probably gonna laugh at the way she looks at the moment just because she does have patches all over her from that and her pom-pom didn't really work out the way I planned it to. It does look a bit nicer than what it did before because it was just sort of all one bit, like you couldn't really notice the ears compared to the pom-pom. So I neaten that up a bit and her paws are all fine, but the groomers are just gonna have to trim her body right back for me and trim her legs because I simply can't do it with that trimmer. I might have to look into getting a better quality trimmer. It's gonna cost me more money, but the way I look at it is it cost me $120 to get her trim back, maybe once every month or once every other month. So the way I look at it is I prefer to invest in trimmers that would last me ages compared to having to pay to get her groomed every month it's over it's probably over like a thousand dollars a year just to get her groove whereas if i just bought let's say 800 dollar trimmers that are poodle grade that can get through this thick coat that's what 800 dollars compared to paying over a thousand dollars in a year to get her groove so i will be looking into that thank you so much for watching this video i'm sorry that you don't really get to see a after shot of her but she does look a little bit different compared to when we started so i guess that's that's something, but yes, so I'll let you guys know what actually happens if I do end up buying new trimmers. It won't be this year that I buy new trimmers, it'll probably be January or February that I purchase new trimmers because I just don't have the money right now. But yes, thank you for watching so far. If you did enjoy this video, give me a big thumbs up. If you already haven't, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just letting every know, my members only section of YouTube is back up and running. So if you would like to see behind the scenes content, content that no one else will see, except for members only, make sure you click that join button. I think it's only $3.99 a month for Australian dollars. I don't know what that is US. I believe it might be $5.99. I'm not too certain though. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, so if you are interested in that, just go to click join and you'll see deleted scenes, behind the scenes, just all that sort of stuff. And I do daily posts on there too for members so they can know what I'm up to, what my plans are for that day. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you in another video. Bye guys.